let the peace, love, and blessing of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The second step to God. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba Olumba Abu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson. First Corinthians chapter five, verse eleven. Second lesson. Second John chapter one, verse ten. Third lesson. Second Corinthians chapter six. Verse 17, quote, Brethren, we are going to reveal two important things to you today. A, the first step to God which teaches us to refrain from sin entirely. And B, the second step to God which also teaches us to leave fornication, falsehood, drunkenness, juju, making, lying, and all manner of sins. You are neither to eat with those who indulge in these practices, nor converse, nor do anything with them. As you refrain from sin, you must leave sinners too, if you want to be a true son of God. How can you be the son of God without disassociating yourself from sinners? It is easier to be the son of Satan than to be the son of God. God does not want any bit of sin in us. If you leave sin, you must part company with sinners. You are to leave them and their deceitful practices. When we tell you to leave the world, we do not mean that you should abandon the earth, but we mean the earthly things such as wealth, money, men, women, riches, fathers, mothers, children, parents, and relations. If you want to enjoy God, have nothing to do with sinners, even their greetings. God does not want their prayers and songs. Their actions are sinful. God does not hear the prayers of sinners. Brethren, today's preaching is meant for all those who have finished with the first step to God, that is, leaving sin completely. If you collaborate with a sinner, you are a sinner, an earthly man, a fornicator, and everything evil. It is a great sin for a Christian to eat or drink, converse, exchange greetings, or have anything to do with a sinner. That was why Paul was annoyed when he saw Peter eating with the Gentiles. He, Paul, disgraced him, Peter, in public until you disassociate yourself completely from sinners you are an earthly man this was the reason why christ chose his 12 disciples and had them separated from the world they had nothing to do with false doctrines juju men unbelievers doubtful followers money cigarettes or drinks we too must have no business with them if really we are the sons of God. It is not possible to be God's friend or his son without first of all leaving sinners and their sinful ways. Read the first lesson again. First lesson. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. But now I have written unto you, not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother, or be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such a one, no, 
not to eat. Brethren, do you see that there is no subtraction? If you have done the first step to God and this step, know that you are near to God. Don't keep company with any brother or sister who is a backbiter, fornicator, an idolater, and so forth. Christ was said to be a friend of sinners, but ever since he died and shed his precious blood, he has no business with sinners anymore. God counts as nothing the death of 100 sinners a day. He hates people who backbite his workers. What you take pride in doing is what he hates. It is disgraceful for a Christian to drink and smoke and associate, and associate with unbelievers. What are you going to preach to them? Nothing in them is good, even the food they cook. If you keep company with sinners, you sin against God and your prayers are not answered. Do you see now why Christ said, if you don't forsake your father or mother, you can't be God's follower? You don't hate them, but they're bad ways. Traitors are unbelievers. Whatever you do for them is lost. God doesn't count them as his children and he doesn't listen to them. I stress that you shouldn't associate with them. Even their word means evil. Don't be surprised to see their prayers worsening a, worsening a sickness instead of improving it. They are nothing. This gospel is not meant for them, but for those who have forsaken sin. Read the second lesson again. Second lesson. Second John, chapter 1, verse 10. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. The weapon. This is our weapon and salvation. Any brother or sister who doesn't bring this teaching to you, do not greet him or her or entertain them. Let him go his or or let him go his or her way. For by keeping his or her company, you have offended God. Christ said, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. The leaven is the false prophet. Why entertain him when he says that the time of the Holy Spirit and vision have passed? This is the last teaching and the revelation of the word of God. Don't listen to whoever teaches you to wear earrings and other ornaments because this is against the Bible teaching. If you do, you bear his burden. Do not rejoice with a sinner or share with him in committing any sin, even if he is your brother or your relative. Why do you listen to those who speak evil words against God, whereas you get annoyed when evil is said about your earthly father? You will find the second step difficult if you haven't passed the first step. Brethren, let's think well. This is no greater sin. There is no greater sin than rejoicing with sinners. The apostles of old had nothing to do with sinners. If you want to be clean, be clean from head to toe. Otherwise, the juju maker will laugh at you.
on the last day. May we have the golden text read again. Golden text, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Wherefore come out from among them and be separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Where do you stand? Do you understand the above lesson? After this sermon, if you still have something to do with a backbiter, you are a Confucianist. You are a pig that throws itself into a muddy place after being washed. The food of a backbiter is water, his words, even his greetings are poisonous. To associate with the child of God, you must always be clean. Don't touch any unclean thing and I will hear you when you call on me. Leave all sinners, otherwise you are lost. Many lament why they should be brotherhood, yet things are hard with them. Do you keep to advice? How can the child of God serve demon? The child of God works for the Father. If you don't leave sin, tell me how you will not touch unclean things. Psalm says, Don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. God does not lock. God does not lack children. Remember the parable of the sower? How he planted good seeds, but the wicked one came and planted wild seeds among the good ones? Satan swears that he will continue to mix up with the children of God so as to cause them to denounce God. I tell you this with tears in my eyes that the time has come to select out real brotherhood. So, don't let Satan laugh at you. God your Father has everything for you. So you should require nothing from the house of the last one. Your Father has silver and gold. Life, in his, life is in his hand. A man of God shouldn't. Befriend a worldly man because he is blind and deaf. Take this gospel home and do it. You will become the children of God. You know we are looking for saints now. If you are not a saint and you are no longer a juju maker, where do you stand? Surely the world will laugh at you. If you want to serve God, do so wholeheartedly so that he may take you as a child and then you will have salvation. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. May the Lord bless his preaching of his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.